Hi, in this video I'm going to go over the basics of using Esprit to uh, develop or to uh, write the CAM software uh, for EDMing parts. Uh, so we're going to start off with opening up Esprit and the first thing you want to do is click uh, the Charmy's Millennium template. Uh, we're going to use this template so uh, things are set up correctly so we can post the programs uh, correctly. So we do that, now we have our blank workspace. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna do is import our DXF file. So go to your file. And we wanna import our DXF. Uh, so there's two things to be concerned about here. The first is you wanna click the merge button. What this does is it will bring the DXF into the template we're using. If you don't do this, it'll open up a new one that's not using our template. The other thing that you need to know is it, whether your DXF was exported in inches or metric. Um, and depending on uh, which one it is, you need to select the right one. So uh, I actually know that this one is uh, imported using metric or was created in metric. And so if you import it in inches, I'll just show you what happens. Uh, so we import it and it's in the wrong one. Down here, what you'll see in the lower right, right corner where you can see my mouse is the uh, coordinates of my mouse. Um, and so if you uh, look from the left side, if you look at the diameter of this part, it is uh, 40, 50 inches. And this part is definitely not that much. Uh, so what we're gonna do is import it correctly now. So I'm gonna try that again. Actually, sorry, I'm gonna create a blank document. No, I don't wanna save that. Yes, I wanna do the template. Open. And now I am gonna import it using metric. Now the part is about two inches across. This is correct. Uh, so uh, first thing I'm gonna do, well, let's just talk about the mouse control. So. Um, if you, you spin the wheel, uh, it'll zoom in and out. If you do a wheel click, uh, you can translate. Uh, and if you do a uh, right click, or less sorry, left click, this will be uh, selecting. So you can either select a group of things or you can select one thing at a time. Um, if you want to select uh, multiple things, you can hold down control and that'll allow you to select multiple things. And if you want to uh, select everything that's connected, you can hold down shift and it'll select everything. Um, so what we're gonna do is the multi-select and get rid of this uh, SolidWorks watermark. And then the next thing we'll talk about is how to move your part. Um, so I wanna move this into uh, the a coordinate system that I want. So highlight everything and then control C. So control C will bring up this dialog and now we can either move the part or copy the part and there's multiple different ways of moving it. So you can rotate it, uh, translate it, uh, all sorts of stuff. I typically use rotate and translate. So we'll translate. Uh, the first way of translating is actually you can just do relative coordinates. So if we translate one inch in the X direction, that will literally just shift it over. Um, so you see that shifted over one inch. Uh, the next thing I'll do is you can line up two points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a point. So over here on your right side uh, is a bunch of uh, things that you can add, point, line segment, arc. Uh, there's some trimming tools and stuff like that. So I'm going to select the point uh, and it will bring up this dialog box. Uh, so you can tell it where you wanna add the point. I'm gonna use snap, and then I'm gonna hold down shift, and you see this icon, that says it's gonna put it right at that intersection. So I added that there, escape, and now I'm back to my selection, and I'm gonna delete these line segments. So now I've got a point, and I wanna line that up with the origin. So what you can do is select everything, Control C, and we're gonna do move, translate, and use two points. I'm gonna select that first point, and I'm gonna move that right to the origin. 
In this one, we're only going to be doing one gear in uh, future videos or one part in future videos. I'm going to show you how to do batches. So I'm just going to get rid of this for now and we'll just focus on this one part. So now what we'll do, so in uh, when using a wire EDM, you kind of have to think about the process that you want to go through. So once you complete a contour of cutting out, that part's going to fall away. So uh, And if you cut out the outside, the entire part falls away and you can't cut anymore. So the first thing we're going to do is cut out this gear tooth profile. And uh, so what? Uh, once again, so these were indicated as holes that are already there. So what I want to do is tell it where to uh, thread. So... What I'm going to do is add a point right there. I'm going to delete these lines. And now what we need to do is create a draft feature. So there's two things that we're going to use pretty frequently. And that is going to be, so in this create features, we have to create a draft feature. And then once we have a draft feature, then we can use this solid wire gold to create contouring and this will create the g-code so the first thing to do is tell it what the draft feature is so first i'm going to select where um, to the wire will thread in and then the contour we want so now i'm going to come here and create my draft feature so the first thing to decide is whether you have a die or a punch. So a die is you're coming from the inside and you care about this inside edge. The punch, a punch is you're coming from the outside and you care about the outside edge. So in our case, we have a die. I always keep it draft conic then ruled. I keep all of these the same. The only thing that I will uh, adjust is if you don't tell it where it, uh, if you don't tell it where the feed in point is, you can control uh, the distance away uh, using default lead in or lead out, but it'll just choose a random position that's that distance away. And then uh, group to folder, I'll talk about more in later videos when we're doing batch uh, batches of items. So now I have uh, my um, draft feature. I'm gonna name this something to, uh, to help me. So I'm gonna do teeth. Uh, you know, so this is the teeth profile. Now I'm going to create our um, contouring. So this is going to be our first one. Uh, I'm going to name this teeth and this teeth. So one thing that's a little annoying is the name here will show up in this drop down, but the comment is what shows up in the G code. So I like to keep those the same name to help me organize. Uh, once again, it's a die. We can change the direction counterclockwise versus clockwise. Um, and then this is uh, how what we want to do. So rough skim versus rough cutoff and skim versus rough skim and cutoff. So I guess I'll go through each one. So what a rough is, is that is the first pass we do. So in the solid piece of metal, it's going to cut in and it's going to go over this contour and cut the part off. Um, then, uh, what skim passes are is you can actually re go over this contour and the part will become more accurate and the surface finish will improve. What a cutoff is, is, um, like I was saying, uh, if you care about, uh, if you want to go over the part again. So essentially right when you cut the part out, the part's going to drop through. Um, and so sometimes you want to use cutoffs in, in, uh, interesting ways. And this is Actually, it'll be easier once I show you in the video, So uh, as I go along in this video. So the first one, what we're going to do is rough, cut off, and then skim. Um, and the reason we're adding a cutoff for this one is we have a big chunk of metal that's going to drop out. And what I want to do is stop before we cut it off. And I want to put magnets or some way of securing it, then cut it off, um, and then remove that piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a stop, and we're going to have a quarter inch uh, of material uh, that's going to be left for cutoff, and then we're going to stop after uh, we cut it out. And this, I'll, I'll re go over this when you see uh, what it does. Um, this is the strategy that we're going to use. So, how many times we do we want to do just a rough cut, and then how many skims? So, uh, you get more and more accurate the more you do, but it takes longer. So, we'll say we're going to do rough and three skims. 
so this would be four passes, three skims and one rough. This is important to get right. Uh, it's uh, when you take it over to the machine, you have to have this lineup. Uh, approaches, I don't normally change this very often. Sometimes you, you uh, might want to. You can come in tangentially, normal to the part, those sorts of things. Um, I will play with the retract length, uh, especially if I don't want to retract very far into the part. We can change this, but for now I'll leave it. And I don't think I've ever changed anything on the advanced page. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and that'll make our uh, contours. So here's the rough one, and notice that the first one doesn't cut all the way. And so what happens is this material is left, and the part won't fall out. And so what I've told it to do is with the stops is we're going to come in over here, and we're going to go along this direction, and what, what's going to happen is I'm going to stop at the end here. And that's going to stop the machine, and I'm going to put in magnets or some way of securing it, and then I'm going to tell it to continue cutting. And it's going to cut it out completely, and that is going to be a free part, and then I tell it to stop there, and I'm actually going to remove what you call the slug. And then after that, it's going to do the skim passes and clean it up. Uh, so that now we will have an accurate gear tooth profile and now we want to cut out the rest of the part. So now what I'm going to do is uh, uh, go back and we're going to do a uh, draft feature. So I'm going to select where we're going to uh, come in. So this point and then I'm going to add this outer profile. Uh, so now we're going to go over to the draft features. And this time we're coming from the outside. So now what we care about is a punch, or that's what we have now is a punch. Uh, once again, I'm going to keep all of this the same. And I'm going to relabel this OD. So this is my outer diameter. Um, now we're going to create the contour. And now the... Um, cutoff becomes a little bit more interesting. So now it's a question of now if I do this, the part that I care about is actually the one that's going to drop out. So what we want to do is uh, we're going to do rough skim and then cut off. And so what this is going to do is I'm not going to cut the whole thing out and I'm going to do my skim passes now before I do the cutoff. Um, and that cutoff will not be very accurate. Um, so uh, I think I'll show you what I'm talking about. So once again, uh, I don't know, we'll say we're going to do rough and three skims. And so that's going to be also four passes. You know, let's just change it up. We'll do rough and two skims. So that's a three pass. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now what you have is we're going to do this, but now we're going to do the skims first. So it's going to go forward. Uh, backwards back uh, and then back again and now we're going to cut this off and this section is going to be rougher and not as accurate as the rest so uh, you can only do this if you're allowed to have a section like that if not you've got to find a way to secure the rest of it and and finish this part up okay so now we've created everything to create a single gear so the last thing to do is to post the program so you go to file advanced nc and uh, click there, open this up, and then we use the CT Millennium. That's the post that we've been using. Okay, now I've got that selected, and we'll post it. And what comes up here is the you can look at the G code. Um, and what's important is you have to have this. So this uh, the. EDM uses a FANUC CNC, and so you need this zero, uh, 0000 and then some number. Um, that tells it it's a FANUC uh, G code, and you need this to load correctly. The other thing you'll see is the four pass. This is what we're doing. Uh, so you need this code to be in here, um, and the rest is the G code. Um, in later videos, I'll, I'll get a little bit more in depth into what's going on, but for now we could run this. And so you file, save as, and the machine uses ISO files. So change this to an ISO um, and you know name it whatever you want. 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, so then you can take this and, and uh, bring it to the machine. So uh, this concludes uh, uh, the very basics of using a DXF to create a wire EDM cam. Uh, thanks for watching.